What's up, Math Ninjas? Mr. Antonucci here. And in this video, I want to talk with you about how to graph exponential functions by hand. It's easy to plug things into the calculator or Desmos, but how do we do it by hand? Well, I'm going to show you in this video today. So when we graph exponential functions by hand, the first thing we want to talk about is some characteristics of exponential functions. They have this form where y equals a times b to the x power where a can't be zero, because if it was, then the whole equation would just end up being zero. b has to be positive, and b also can't be one. If b were one, then you would just have one to the power of whatever x is, and the answer would always be a times one, no matter what you put in for x. Now, something that's unique about exponential functions is that the exponent is the variable. So we have to keep that in mind with exponential functions. One of the things, another thing with exponential functions is you can actually put in any number you want for the value of x. So its domain would be all real numbers. And the range of the parent function for exponential functions would be y greater than zero, not equal to, but just strictly greater than zero. We'll talk, we might talk about that more a little bit. If the graph ends up being a reflection and it's flipped, flipped over, then it would be y is less than zero. And then corresponding to that would be translations if the graph were moved up or down however many units, then you would just adjust the, the range for that. But the domain is always going to be all real numbers. Okay, so some examples would be like y equals uh, four to the x. We're going to look at that in a little bit, or y equals three times one third to the x. And the thing here is you cannot multiply the three and the one third together to just get one to the x power. I see the students do this kind of thing all the time, but remember, we have to keep in mind order of operations, which says you have to apply the exponent before you multiply. So if you did multiply the three times the one third, then you'd be breaking some math rules there. OK, um, so that is some examples of exponential functions. Another thing is that if A is greater than one, the graph is going to increase from left to right and you're going to have exponential, we call exponential growth. And if A is between zero and one, that means it would be a, like a fraction or a decimal between zero and one, the graph is gonna decrease as you move left to right. And that would represent what we call exponential decay. And why do we have to define A like this? You know, Because A cannot be um, zero. In fact, let me change that real quick. We're talking about the values of B not the values of a. So if b is greater than one, then you would have exponential growth. And if b is between zero and one, some fraction or decimal, decimal between zero and one, then you would have exponential decay. Okay, because remember, the definition of exponential functions we're using here, b always has to be positive, can't be zero. Okay, so let's look at a couple quick examples here. I want to graph the the graph of y equals four to the x and find the y-intercept and state the domain and range. So what I like to do is just make a table here. Here's my x values and corresponding y values. So typically when I start to graph, what I like to do is do some negatives, some positives, and zero. So five points that would help us would be x equals negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If x is negative two, then y is going to be four to the negative two power, which is one over four squared, which is one sixteenth. Okay, very, very small y value. If y is negative one, it's gonna be four to the negative one power, which is one over four, which is one fourth. If x is zero, then you would have four to the zero power. And remember any non-zero number to the power of zero is gonna be one. And then when x is 1, you'd have 4 to the first power, which is 4. And then when x is 2, you'd have 4 squared, which is 16. OK, so if we're going to graph this, this function here, uh, there's no negative y values. So we don't really have to worry about the y values being negative there. 
and I'm going to go up to here. In each tick mark, I'm going to have represent two. So if I go, I'm going to start with the y-intercept. When x is zero, the y value is one, so it's going to cross right about there. When x is one, you're up here at four, and when x is two, you're all the way up here at 16. Now, if we go the other way, and that might be right behind my, my camera, but you'll be okay. Uh, when x is negative one, you're at one fourth, and when x is negative two, you're at one sixteenth, and the graph is going to look like this. Okay, so to the right, it starts to increase and actually increases faster and faster and faster and gets steeper and steeper. And as you go to the left, it levels off and looks like it's going to like line right up with the x axis. It doesn't actually hit the x axis because that would mean the y value is zero and the y value always has to be greater than zero, but it's going to level off. Okay, so the y intercept. is the point zero comma one. The domain is um, all real numbers. I'm just gonna abbreviate ARN. And the range is Y greater than zero. Don't put greater than or equal to, it's strictly greater than zero. Okay? All right, so let's do another one. Um, and this time I'm gonna do one that has a fraction. So if we wanna graph, y equals one fourth to the x power. Find the y intercept, state the domain and range. Same thing, except different functions. So we're gonna start with the table. And like I said before, we're gonna do x and y values with uh, some negatives, zero, and some positives. So if I have one fourth to the negative two. Now remember with negative exponents, you can flip it and it will make the exponent positive. So that's gonna be the same as four squared, which is 16. So if you have one fourth to the negative one, that's gonna be the same as four over one or just four to the first power, which is four. If you have one fourth to the zero power, then remember any non-zero number to the power of zero is equal to one. First power, you have one fourth to the first, which is just one fourth, and then one fourth squared, which you can think of this two ways. When you square a fraction, you square the numerator and denominator, which would give you one over 16, or you could think of it as multiplying two fourths together. So two fractions of one fourth multiplied together. Either way, you'd get one sixteenth. Okay, so again, we can draw the graph here. And my x axis, I'm going to have go by ones. And my y axis, I'm going to have go by twos. Okay. So I'm going to plot the y intercept first, zero, comma, one. So that's going to be halfway to the first tick mark from the origin. Okay. And I always like to do that as a reference point. And then when x is negative two, the y value is way up here at 16. When it's one, the y value is four is right there when it when x is one i'm right here on the table the y value is one fourth really close and then when x is two the y value is one sixteenth really really close to the x-axis so your graph's going to curve and look like it levels off right on the x-axis okay you, you probably draw it a little bit closer it's hard to draw very accurately with my finger on the ipad but notice to the left, the graph uh, gets steeper and steeper and steeper and goes up higher. And to the right, the graph levels off and looks like it's going to hit the, the, y, the x axis, but it never actually does. OK, so this is an example of exponential decay. And that makes sense with what we said, because the value of b is 1 fourth, which is less than 1. We said whenever the value of b is between 0 and 1, you're going to have exponential decay, and the graph is going to decrease from left to right. OK, so just to finish, we have a y-intercept of 0, 1. The domain, again, abbreviating all real numbers. And the range is y greater than 0. Same range as the previous problem as well.
Okay. All right, guys, that's it for graphing exponential functions by hand. Hope this was helpful to you. Please do make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. And if you have a math problem that you'd like me to go over, maybe make a video about, drop it in the comments and who knows, maybe I'll make a video about it. All right, guys, you take care. Make it a great day.